Cisco Firepower Threat Defense, Snort version 3, Network Discovery, and Rule Recommendations. Now, you can use Firepower Intrusion Rule Recommendations to associate the operating systems, servers, and client application protocols detected on your network, leveraging Firepower Network Discovery. Now, this allows you to tailor your intrusion policies to the specific needs of your monitored network and stay current with changes within the environment, providing higher levels of efficacy. Let's get started here. All right, let's get started here. Let's go to policies and we're going to set up network discovery. Now, the goal here is to understand the assets that we're protecting. So it's easy for a signature to fire based on a, an attack pattern, say for Linux-based systems. If I don't have Linux-based systems, do I want that alert to be a high level impact so my analyst is focused on trying to triage and understand what might have taken place here? No, I wanted a low impact level. Why? Because it's not relevant to the operating system being targeted. So we're gonna use discovery here. We're gonna look for hosts, users, and applications, and we're gonna be specific. We're actually going to select our lab networks. Now here, you're gonna select networks that you own, your address space. This is internal IP addresses, the assets that are in the DMZ data center inside network, printers, etc. whatever is gonna traverse the firewall, as well as external IPs that you own. Now we've got this enabled. We're gonna go ahead and deploy, and like I said, once we do that, every payload and packet that traverses the system is gonna provide us a little bit of insight into what the possibility is in regards to the operating system. And finally, it'll come to a determination whether it's Windows or Linux-based systems, it'll start understanding the applications and services that are running on these assets, and after that, we're gonna be able to use things like firepower rule recommendations that's gonna allow us um, to automate the tuning of the intrusion prevention or detection policies that we have in place. Now we're jumping into the analysis portion of it and we're looking at the hosts themselves. You can see we're starting to see Microsoft, uh, CentOS, Google, Red Hat, Ubuntu, Apple iOS. Now let's just jump to discovery events and we're gonna start seeing additional detail here. And you can see the IP address, the MAC address, the MAC vendor, the description. Again, all of this information is going to help us determine what category the system should fall under and then more specifically the version. All right, now we're looking at the hosts themselves and they're starting to come in and we can see that we've got some in the 192 address space and we can pivot into it. And this is the type of detail that you get here the IP address, the, the NetBIOS name, the MAC address, the current user logged into the system, the operating system, the potential versions of the operating system, and much more vulnerabilities could be associated to the asset based on our understanding of it. Really, really neat stuff. Next thing we're gonna do here is let's go ahead and jump to Snort version three. And this is where we're gonna start looking at firepower recommendations. That's gonna use the stuff that we learn from network discovery to provide recommendations in regards to the rules that we should have enabled based on the applications and operating systems that we're using or being leveraged in our environment. Now, when I hit recommendations, you're gonna see a sliding security level scale here. And you can see some are gonna say there's really no impact here, um, no existing rules will be disabled, etc. And then as I start increasing security, it gives me a little bit more insight into I'm choosing security over connectivity and then finally maximum detection. Now we also have protected networks that we may not want to be part of these recommendations. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll hit generate and apply. And you're gonna see um, as it goes through and does the analysis, the change in, in our alerts and blocking. Um, it's gonna change this based on our understanding of the environment. And you can see it just did it here. We now have 534 alerts and we're blocking now 16,000 uh, potential security uh, events we can come in and accept the recommendations to disable rules. So this is higher efficacy. This keeps existing rules that match potential vulnerabilities on discovered hosts and disables rules for vulnerabilities not found on the network. 
Now you can see here alerts 534 and we've got block is 16,026 and you can see there's a change that took place there as well. We've dropped down to 308 and 13,173. We can also analyze the rules that have been disabled um, or any rules in that matter um, before we go ahead and apply and deploy that policy. The other thing we can do, instead of running this manually, we can actually schedule it to run automatically. Now this is good practice to do, whether it's once a week, once every two weeks, a month, whatever it is based on your environment. The other thing you might wanna do is have this as part of your change management process. If you light up new services, you might wanna come back in here within a, a certain time frame to rerun Firepower recommendations to ensure that you didn't miss anything. Now we're gonna run this every two weeks. We'll run it at a certain time frame here. And um, we'll give it a name. And all policies. Let's scroll down here and make sure that we got everything. And we'll go ahead and save. Now we didn't get everything. I forgot here that, um, that I need to repeat this on a certain date. So I want this every Saturday. And the problem here is if I hit save again, it's gonna error because the date is actually um, behind. It, June 23rd is, is, is already passed. And so I've gotta go ahead and change the date here. So. Let's go ahead and do that. But it gives you some warnings as you go through if you miss something uh, that's critical it, to the success of the scheduled task to run, it's gonna let you know. All right, we'll change that. We should be good to go. Let's go ahead and hit save here. And that's it. We've got our saved task. It's gonna run every two weeks on Saturday at the time frame that we set and we can forget about it. A very slick capability to allow us to keep our policies up to date.